meeting uh, to order uh, the today's uh, Commission on Disability Issues meeting. Uh, and with that, uh, Denise, I'd like to go around and do roll call. And if you could, when Denise uh, does call your name, uh, if you could state uh, where you're zooming in from today, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Go ahead, Denise, with roll call. Okay. Um, first, I'm going to tell this meeting will be broadcast live on CTN Cable 16, ATT Channel 99, online at a2gov.org, watch CTN. To speak in public comment, call toll-free 877-853-5247 or 888-788-0099. Enter meeting ID 919-8673-1455. Thanks. Okay. Commissioner Button is absent. Council member, hold on. I think she's here. Council member Ghazi Edwin is here. Chair Damon. Yes, thank you. Uh, Zach Damon, Chairman, Commission on Disability Issues. I'm coming from you. I'm coming to you from Ann Arbor, Michigan, Washtenaw County. Commissioner Hawkins. Hi, Rachel Hawkins here, Commissioner. Um, also coming to you from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Poster is not here. Commissioner Gossage. Uh, hi, everybody. Alex Gossage, Commissioner from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Commissioner Mozak. Yes, hello. Commissioner Kathleen Mozak calling in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Commissioner Solomon. Matthew Solomon, Commissioner, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Vice Chair Keeler. Uh, Vice Chair Keeler from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Ward 5. Thank you. You have We have a quorum. You're muted, Zach. Of course. Thank you. I need a shirt that says you're muted, and oh. we'll be fine. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to move to the approval of today's meeting agenda. Um, is there uh, any a uh, motion to approve today's agenda. I'll move um, to approve it. Okay. Uh, Larry moves to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Kathleen. All right, Kathleen. All right. All in favor of approving today's meeting agenda, uh, please unmute and say aye. 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 All right. Aye. Thank you. All right, so moving down, we have the approval of the meeting minutes um, from February. Um, hopefully everyone has had an opportunity uh, to review those. I know we've had some technical difficulties with some of the links, um, but if there are questions about the February meeting minutes, uh, we can bring that to the forefront now, or uh, we can make a motion to approve. I was not able to read the minutes. I did not know if others were able to do that. Okay. So I'm working uh, on that now. It'd be moved to table that. Okay. Yeah, we can. I mean, if if all of you are not comfortable with, not comfortable with approving the minutes uh, due to not having uh, reviewed them uh, or being able to. Uh, we can we can table that uh, for the next meeting. Uh, is there a motion to table the minutes uh, from February uh, since I'm, we were not able to? Okay, I'm Matthew, a, yeah. you make a motion. Uh, is there a second to table the meeting minutes from February uh, at this time? Kathleen, was that your hand? Okay, you second? Okay. So all in favor uh, of tabling the review and approval of the February meeting minutes uh, to next month. Uh, if you could unmute and say aye, please. Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, we have our public comments section. Um, so if any member of the community is currently on with us today and would like to make a public comment, uh, we would love to hear from you or any questions, comments, concerns, uh, that you have for the commission at this time. Uh, Denise, do we have anyone on for public comment? 
No, I don't see anyone presently. Thank you. Okay. All right. So next, moving on to our presentations uh, portion uh, of today's meeting. We have with us, and I'm very grateful uh, that she was able to uh, give us her time today. We have Ms. Michelle Bennett from the Equitable Engagement Initiative. So Michelle, thank you for joining us. The table is yours. Good afternoon, Good commissioners. Um, Michelle, I'm gonna make you a co-host so you can um, show a presentation if you like. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I do have one prepared, so that would be okay. helpful. Although I think I'm already able to. Let me see here. So can you guys see this? Yes, yep, I can see it. These slides. OK, great. OK, um, my name is Michelle Bennett. I am a community engagement specialist um, with the city in the systems planning unit. And uh, I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about the Equitable Engagement Initiative. I'm giving a very high level overview of what we've done thus far. Um, and on the last slide, I'll have the link where you can read the draft report that's um, up on the project page. Um, so this process started about 18 months ago and the project's main aim was to work with the community and define what equity means um, so that we could incorporate it into our policies, guidelines, and practices at the city um, to have a more inclusive process and ideally more uh, uh, equitable outcomes. So before we got started on the um, working with the steering committee and writing the report, we did some pre-work. Um, here are some of the key demographic um, data points that we collected uh, over the last couple of years. This demographic survey is attached. Um, these questions are attached to most of our surveys and at our public meetings. And I just pulled um, these four here to show you um, largely what we already knew, um, but this data helped confirm that most of the attendees at our engagement sessions or our survey participants um, identify as white. Um, you can see here down at age that they're generally in the empty nester or retiree um, age bracket. Their income levels are much higher than um, what's reported in the census. So you can see they're concentrated here um, up in the 100,000 and greater. And then in terms of housing tenure, we have a lot more homeowners responding to surveys when our city is you know, over half renters. So this is just meant to show you the sort of mismatch and sort of the impetus for really um, starting this, this project is we know that we need um, different outreach methods, different engagement techniques, because we're not achieving a representative, um, we're not getting representation from our attendees. Another part of the pre-work was uh, educating ourselves on citywide what our practices are, um, as well as promising practices from other communities. And then looking into some of the equitable research that's been done locally or at the regional level. Um, and when I say that, I primarily mean the Washtenaw County. So I'll be able to share some of those with you. Um, our current practices, uh, one that I'm working to update right now is the Community Engagement Toolkit. And that's a series of five steps where project managers will st sit down with a community engagement specialist. There's myself and um, one other person. That position is vacant right now, but we are hiring for that. So there are two of us here at the city that go through a series of questions to determine what are the best techniques for our project outcomes and who are the stakeholders that need to be at these meetings with us. Um, the demographic data collection, I just shared those results with you. We've also gone through training with the International Association of Public Participation. They're a nonprofit with a, a global reach that's purely dedicated to public participation. So um, right, 
right before the pandemic, they came in and trained about 50 staff members on best practices. We've also worked with youth in the past. Um, the, the pandemic put a, a pause on that, but that's something else we'd like to pick back up um, because it taught them a lot about the civic processes, who their council members are, how to get engaged, and to start critically thinking about you know, how engagement is done and what kind of results it yields. There's also an ordinance on file that's mainly used by the, the planning department where developers have to um, engage the community um, as a part of their process. We also created an engagement hub um, and I put that in quotes because we are, this is another thing that we're updating and that it, it hasn't quite functioned the way we'd like. Um, you can tell that by the low number of visitors, it's not quite the hub we were hoping for, but this was put together right as everything was transitioning at the pandemic from in-person to virtual. So we wanted to at least have a landing page um, with links that can take people where they need to go. But I'm gonna talk about this in more detail towards the end. So uh, while we were doing our pre-work, we were also um, investigating um, different organizations to reach out to. Like I mentioned, we have strong representation from our white, wealthier homeowners. Um, and so we did a lot of work to identify groups that represent other demographic groups, other interests. Um, and through that process, you can see here's one of the flyers here up on the slide. We received um, 80 applications and, um, and selected 30 steering committee members to lead this project. And so once they were selected, they met every month for a year and a half. And some of their major accomplishments here were defining equity, which um, I'll share with you, what our core values are and what our recommendations are for council to improve our, our engagement processes to be more equitable. Um, so here's the definition of equity. And this is a big conversation in this area of the difference between equity versus equality, whereas equality is giving everyone the exact same. Um, equity, if you can see from this graphic here, is really showing that we need to understand that not everyone's experiences are the same, and that if we are to give them tools to succeed, that those might have to be tailored to um, different people's needs. If you give everyone the same tool, they might not all be able to thrive. Um, so that's the direction that we are going in in the, in the definition that we're going to use. Um, just so you can see how busy they were over the year and a half, these are some of the major topics that they discussed. Um, city hiring practices was, was a, a big topic and uh, that'll be reflected in some of the recommendations I share with you all. But it was really um, a range of what the city does already, what are some of the larger um, topics to tackle in terms of equitable engagement. Um, all of those were discussed with speakers, with going over different tools that have been developed and getting their feedback on them. So these were the five major focus areas that kept coming up. Um, and we had to kind of rein it in here. If you can see in the paw of this, you know, five toad animal that the question here is how can community engagement establish an equitable footing on all of these topics? So as these topics came up, we had to remember that this is all attached to our processes really and how we can engage the community equitably on these topics. So at the end of this process, towards the end, we probably spent a few months going over these together. Here are some of their recommendations. And really, this is the, the area where I'd love any feedback or questions that you all have about this. Um, we are in the process of going to several different commissions to share and get feedback with the ultimate goal of you know, taking this to council, ideally with some of the steering committee members so they can get that practice and that experience doing that. Um, and then using that as a guide to make budget requests, to change some of our practices, to work with other departments so that we're not siloed on this topic. Um, so the first recommendation, it demonstrates the city is committed to advancing equity. Um, this is really, first of all, you can see here, this is really kind of based on hiring practices and leadership. 
um, and also really holding the city accountable. So their main comment was before you even get to engagement, what would be really helpful is if you had staff that reflected the community and that could serve um, us and actually attract us to these events. So some people just might not feel comfortable coming to these engagement events because they're not run by people that they trust or feel comfortable with. So you can see the first three there are kind of geared towards um, diversifying our staff um, and making sure that they have pathways to leadership. Um, in the fourth one there, you can see they really want city council to be involved. They want to see things adopted and enforced as policies that this exercise was not lip service. And being authentic there, you know, it sounds broad, um, but having been at those meetings, what they're really part of what they're getting at is um, how you frame the conversation to be very honest and straightforward from the beginning to not use jargon to let them know what influence they have and what the process is. Um, and through that, you can help build trust and transparency through, um, through your sessions. The second set of recommendations are more about outreach. You can see here, I'm um, providing both ample and targeted invitations to engagement opportunities. So there was a push here from the committee members to um, not only use digital means. So during COVID, we kind of switched exclusively to that. And they're saying you need to get back to being on the ground more, getting out and flyering so that you can talk to people, uh, like creating a much more kind of informal network as well of um, when you're hanging up a flyer in a business, you know, talking to them, getting to know them, having more face-to-face -face interaction. Also translating our materials for our non-native speakers. Um, and then again, the hub. So I will, I will touch on that again at the end, but the idea is to have a centralized place where they can go to find all of the opportunities, the engagement opportunities. At the moment, those are all on project pages. So they are accessible, but you would have to think through what department something was in. It's not super intuitive if you don't work for the city. Um, so we are working on that. Um, the third set of recommendations here are kind of uh, geared towards budget and training. So providing the resources necessary for staff to conduct meaningful engagement. Um, and you can see here that they wanted to continue with the training, um, primarily I would say through the International Association of Public Participation. Um, make sure that your projects budget to have community engagement staff, especially at the beginning of projects, to really think through the outreach um, process. Um, continue to involve the community engagement toolkit. Um, so making sure our questions are up to date, that they're including equity in them. And um, having milestones for success. That takes staff to be able to sit and think about your future and plan ahead and hold yourself accountable um, is a little bit harder if there's only, you know, one of you uh, or two. So the last set of recommendations here are making events more accessible and attractive. So holding hybrid meetings, which is something that's more easily done maybe at a commission level, but if we wanna do exercises with people where we're getting input, um, we haven't yet cracked exactly what facilities could host people calling in and doing breakout rooms while also doing those activities in person. So that's something that we still need to figure out. Um, designing our meetings so that we don't have a dominant narrative. So, so grandstanding, for example, setting up meetings to mitigate that and make sure people that feel less comfortable being vocal in those um, situations can speak up. And if required, you can see here number four, higher trained meeting facilitators and moderators, depending on how sensitive the topic is. And if we're not well trained in that topic, getting outside help, which goes back to the budgeting, right? Is thinking far enough uh, ahead of time. And then the fifth one here is um, something we'd hope could be integrated into the hub or into our practices of at the beginning of every project, letting them know what is the decision that's being made? What's the decision-making process? Who makes the decision? 
and what level of influence do we have? Um, that would be a more attractive um, structure for a meeting because a lot of the complaints we got is people say, why would I come if I don't know what the outcome is going to be? Is that worth my time? So we have taken all of those into account. Those are all in the draft report. So if you'd like to read more about them, again, I'll share the link with you at the end, but this is a, a pretty high level overview. Um, so in researching the promising practices of other communities, we found that engagement hubs, um, I won't say are very common, but it's not uncommon to see them, especially for a community um, of our size or bigger. And so we have looked into that. I'm happy to touch on any of these other ones as well during questions, if you'd like. Um, but I also want to, I don't, I want to be respectful of the time here, but we can always go back to this page if you all have questions about this. Um, but the hub example I want to show you is from the city of Pittsburgh. You can see here all of the projects are consolidated onto one page. And at the top, what's really nice is that you can customize what you see on the page based on your interests. So if you wanted to say, I want to see everything about bicycle infrastructure or new housing development. You can also select by geography. So maybe you just want to know about anything that's happening within, you know, a quarter of a mile from your home. And then that would customize this page to your interests or geography. You could also then click on this project card and it would have laid out what the timeline is, who to contact, um, project details. If there were a survey, the link would be there. Um, meeting recordings and notes, you know, graphics that you need to see. A lot of this we do already do, but as I mentioned, it's scattered. So this is kind of putting it all on one platform and having a little bit more customization available for, for different users. So that wraps up my presentation, but at like I mentioned at the end here, if you wanna to go to this website, that's where the draft report is. There's also a lot more information about the project. And then if you have any other questions or comments that we don't get to tonight, you can write an email to this email address that goes um, directly to me. So, so I will be checking that. Um, so I'm happy to open it up now to any questions or comments, any feedback that you have, I'm happy to, to hear. Yeah, Michelle, uh, first of all, just thank you so much um, for all the work that you're doing. Um, I think it's, it's wonderful. If you don't mind, could you put that A2 equi equitable engagement at a2gov.org? Could you put that in the chat for everyone, yeah. please? Thank you. Um, but no, I, I think uh, it's it's really amazing uh, the work that you're you're doing. And I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, you're right on in terms of, you know, being the boots on the ground, you know, being present, being in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's very encouraging to hear. Um, but I wanted to open it up to the commissioners uh, four questions. Uh, Denise, if you see any hands raised or those that have questions, I'd like to open it up probably maybe to, I would say three. And then if there are any uh, additional questions, um, hopefully, uh, Michelle, we can then uh, reach out to you uh, through that email if there are additional questions. Sure. So yeah, let Commissioner me just Mosaic say one... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can I just say one thing is I don't have a chat feature and because I'm a panelist or co-host I can't put it in the question and answer box so I don't I don't know of a way to share this with you right now except for on this slide um, I'll send it to them, Michelle. Me. yeah okay okay I thank can you. send it to them okay thanks thank you Michelle mm -hmm. all right so uh are there any questions Denise um Commissioner Mozak has her hand up Hi. So it's really kind of like a chicken and an egg situation, isn't it, Michelle, in terms of the people that we want to hear from most are disenfranchised. I'm our, I think you use the word minoritized individuals are the ones that we're having the hardest time engaging with. And yet they're the voice that needs to be heard the most. And I'm wondering, you sort of touched on it a little bit, um, but this is something I'm very passionate about and, and really uh, want to help 
but I don't know how. I mean, is there a way that the Commission with Disability Issues can be helpful? Um, are you looking at different platforms? You know, not everybody has a cell phone. Not, not everybody, if they have a cell phone, not everybody has a smartphone. Not everybody has access to the internet. We really saw that at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah pandemic about how many people are just being left behind the very people we want to reach. So yeah, being, being that chicken and egg kind of thing, how do we sort of really get our hand in there and do this? Have we looked at other communities who have maybe been more successful at this? Yeah, those are um, good questions. Um, we have done some research. You, you'll see in the report that we did look at what other communities are doing. Um, that's that's summarized in the report. Um, I will say, what can a commission do? Um, one thing we've been hearing from commissions is that it's um, maybe hard to fill vacancies when terms are up. And so a lot of people rely on their personal network. Um, uh, but depending on the makeup of your group, relying on your personal network may just kind of perpetuate this trend, uh, you know, of having of not having proper representation on different commissions. So maybe looking at your, you know, what is your outreach method for when you are looking for new commissioners is uh, one place to start, um, you know, and that's going to be a big question for us to tackle because who's in charge of that, right? Like. I helped with this report and I want to move as many of these things forward as possible, but there's not like a one person overseer of all the commissions who's keeping track of, uh, you know, the demographic makeup of all of them. So it, it might end up being, you know, each commission on their own trying to figure out how do we, how do we diversify our commissions? So, so that's one um, possibility. Um, I would also say that, you know, you're heavily involved in this, uh, like disability issues. So if you had any feedback for us in that area to send over, that would be great. We did have representation on the steering committee, but um, in full transparency, I started in the summer at the city. So the project was, you know, more than halfway done there. And by then, the the person who you know, was representing like disability issues was, no, um, I think, no longer attending with great frequency. So I think there is space for for more feedback from this group and on that area in particular, you know, so like when it comes to website design or um, I, I don't know, any any things that you guys hear on the ground would be would be helpful for the report. Thank you. Very informative. Any, any other questions from commissioners at this time? I don't see any other hands. Um, excuse me, Zach, I just wanted to inform the commissioners that Legistar is not working at the present time. That's why they're unable to open the links on their agenda, but I'm going to send them the um, um, minutes individually or just as a group of a I see a hand. Hold on one second. And I'll do that shortly. Um, w is here. And she has her hand. All right, Debbie. Okay. Is she on mute? Okay. Could you unmute, Debbie? I just wanted to say thank you for coming, Michelle. Very informative. Oh, well, thank and you. It, I'm happy to be here. Um, you know, it, one more question: Is it ongoing? Is it continual, continuous? Yeah, that's a really good question. So, currently, most of our engagement is project based, um, including this. Right, this was a big project, um, and we don't really want it to end because the steering committee has been so great to work with and so enthusiastic that we are looking for ways to extend this probably not exactly in this form um but one of our promising practices was community liaisons so that might be a format where we could work with them you know find a way to compensate them for their time for going out into some of these communities that feel neglected or don't want to engage with us um 
to have community liaisons, ideally from the, the committee, you know, work with them and relay information back to us. And we could really work on stakeholder building that way. Um, but we are we are in the process of thinking of how to turn this committee over into something else to keep at least these thoughts going, um, you know, and motiv motivating us to be accountable and keep working on it. Thank you so much. Well, and Michelle, this is Zach. I just want to say I think your point on website accessibility uh, is extremely paramount as well as we continue to navigate, you know, the digital landscape and as, uh, you know, the city continues to improve and uh, also, you know, kind of rework uh, their web processes and things. So absolutely, um, you know, I hope, I don't want to speak for the full commission, but I hope as you continue and as you work uh, on this process that you can keep in touch with us. And if there are things that you believe uh, we as a commission can give direct feedback on, uh, yeah. to you and or your committees uh, that we're able to do so. That would be great. And and I would like to share that right now the city is in the process of updating its website. And I think once they have that done, they are going to need um, people to test it out. And so I think it would be great if uh, if you all could be one of those groups that goes through and says, you know, this isn't going to work for people with low vision or this isn't going to work for this. I mean, ADA compliance is a part of the contract, but I think that it could still be helpful for, for your feedback in that situation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions uh, for Michelle at this time? Okay. Well, Michelle, thank you again uh, to you and everyone working with you um, on equitable, equitable engagement and your initiative. Uh, and again, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a good evening. Thanks, thank Michelle. You. Bye. All right. Moving on to our next presentation today, we have the Washtenaw Library for the Blind and Physically Disabled and Miss Katie Monkevich. Katie, welcome. Hello. Hi, everybody. Just got some, a couple things to tell you all about today. Uh, we have a couple of events coming up at the library. Um, we have art history in the afternoon. We're talking about Claude Monet. This will be on Tuesday, March 21st from 3 to 4 p.m. at the downtown library in the fourth floor meeting room. You can come learn about Claude Monet, the most beloved and well-known impressionist of all time from retired arts and humanities teacher Kathy Gunderson. Kathy will use visuals to guide you through Monet's works, style, and sub significance in history. We also have game night coming up on Thursday, March 23rd from 5.30 to 7.30 at our Pittsfield branch in the program room. This event is for grades three to adults, and it's just a big game night at the library. Come play games with old friends and new. A relaxing few hours with some of the best card and board games out there. And then we also have Hello My Name Is, our name change clinic. This will be Friday, March 24th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the downtown library in the fourth floor meeting room. Join the Jim Toy Community Center's outreach and the outlaws at the University of Michigan for a free clinic dedicated to addressing the challenges of name changes for transgender and gender nonconforming people. They will provide details on how to legally change your name and gender marker in the state of Michigan. Information on how to update your social security, passport, driver's license, and birth certificate will also be available. Legal volunteers will be on site after the presentation to answer questions and assist with forms. Fingerprinting services will also be available on site with no fee. If you'd like to take advantage of the fingerprinting services, please bring a government issued photo ID. All right, and some information on materials. As usual, WLBPD patrons can order digital cartridges by calling 734 327. 4224 or email us at wlbpd at aadl.org. You can call us to 
sign up for service or to sign up for the Braille and audio reading download service, BARD. Through that service, you can download your own books. You can visit nlsbard.loc.gov to learn more or call us and we can help. And I will tell you about a few books that you can find that have recently been added to BARD. We have Origins, 14 Billion Years of Cosmic Evolution by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Our true origins are not only human or even terrestrial, but in fact, cosmic. Drawing on recent scientific breakthroughs in cross-pollination among geology, biology, astrophysics, and cosmology, Origins illuminates the soul-stirring leaps in our understanding of the cosmos. This revised and updated edition features such startling discoveries as the now more than 5,000 detected exoplanets that promise to reveal exciting possibilities for life in the cosmos and data from a new generation of ground-based and space-borne observatories that have fundamentally changed what we know about the expanding universe and maybe even the laws of physics themselves. And Nuts About Squirrels, The Rodents That Conquered Popular Culture by Don H. Corrigan. Squirrels are not your average rodents. They have been stars in the mass media for many, many decades. This book looks at how their behavior and ubiquity has been has given them an equally ubiquitous presence across nearly every media platform, from children's books and comics to major motion pictures, video games, and the daily news. And finally, one of our most popular books, we're getting a ton of requests for this, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmis. In the early 1960s, chemist Elizabeth Zott has a lot of challenges as the only woman on her team at Hastings Research Institute. She falls for colleague Calvin Evans, but the double standards of the day eventually have her looking for a new chapter outside academia, hosting a television cooking show. That's all I've got for you today. Does anybody have any questions for me? Thank you so much. Uh, Matthew, you have a question. Not a question, just I wanted to tack on a plug for the exhibit that can be seen in the basement of the downtown library. It's about film culture in Ann Arbor. It's terrific. Uh, cool. It's in conjunction with a new book by Frank Uli, and it's a wonderful exhibit. Saw it this weekend. Highly recommend it to the commissioners and anyone else who's tuned in. Agreed, Matthew. I'll just add a little bit to the plug as well. Very fascinating on all of those uh, film associations uh, that were were a part of Ann Arbor and are a part of the film history uh, in Ann Arbor. So congratulations to the Ann Arbor District Library and to Frank and to that exhibit. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Matthew. Amazing and uh, and educational for sure. That's great. Thank you both so much for sharing that. I actually haven't seen it yet, so I will be sure to get down there this week. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And then um, I just want to make a quick announcement since we have you on, Katie. I know that Visions 2023 is coming up, and I am super yeah. excited to announce uh, to, our, to our commission that we will uh, be having a table uh, again this year. So uh, I just want to encourage all of us uh, to come to Visions. Uh, to work the table during the day and get a chance to support Katie, support the library, but of course also support all of the disability organizations uh, across the state that will be there. So thank you, Katie, so much as always for considering us uh, for a part of Visions and we're very excited. Thanks so much for bringing that up too. It was so wonderful having you all last year. We're super excited to have you back. And um, you all should probably be seeing some save the dates coming out soon for visions uh, filtering through the community. But uh, just so you know, it will be on Wednesday, June 7th from 11 to 4 at the downtown Ann Arbor District Library. And I'm sure that you're going to hear me say that every <coughs> time now until then. So um, we'll talk more about it as time goes on. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Anything else for Katie? All right. Well, thank you so much, Katie. We always appreciate <coughs> everything you, you and your staff do. Thank you. 
Oh, you're welcome. You all have a great day. Bye-bye. All right. Next, we have the Ann Arbor Center for Independent Living presentation from Ms. Joyce Blair. Welcome, Joyce. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Um, the After 47 years of being known as the Ann Arbor Center for Independent Living, I am happy to announce that the center will be now be known as Disability Network Washtenaw Monroe Livingston. Um, the update was made for a variety of reasons, but primarily because people thought we were a housing organization. Um, it is now that our new name is now associated with um, 14 SILs in Michigan that use the moniker Disability Network or a variation of it. Um, and it also reflects uh, the people that we serve in the uh, counties of Washtenaw, Monroe and Livingston. We will continue to be disability led and disability operated. We will remain a, pl a place for people with disabilities across our community to gather, build, advocate and reach personal goals with the common vision of an inclusive community that is accessible to everyone. I want you to know that as of February, 2023, our computer lab is open to the public by appointment and our accessible and adaptable gym is open to the public by appointment. And our upcoming events. We have a technology assistance session happening on Friday, March 24th from 12 o'clock to three o'clock p.m. Um, for people that need assistance with tasks like sending emails or understanding how to use Zoom or finding things online, um, an assistive technology specialist will be there to uh, help and guide people. And also uh, cybersecurity basics training with uh, an on-site uh, tech educator will be available. Uh, please contact Elliot at Disability Network, Washtenaw, Monroe, Livingston, and the new moniker is dnwml.org for more information. All of the events that I'm going to announce can be accessed by calling our center at 734-971-0277. Let's see. The next event I'd like to announce is an, an open house in Monroe, Michigan, and everyone is invited to attend. That will be on April 25th at 2023 to see our other physical office in Monroe. Um, that mm -hmm. event will happen from 1030 to 130 p.m. And the address is on Dixie Highway. For more information, please see our website. Also upcoming, the third annual Nothing About Us Without Us Film Festival, April 18th through the 20th, 2023. Um, this three-day event will take place entirely on Zoom. We will watch a selection of films related to disability inclusion and independent living, and then discuss what we watched together. All films presented feature a disability theme and reflect the values of the independent living movement. The festival will conclude Thursday afternoon with a conversation on disability advocacy. Um, all events are free and open to the public. To schedule and register, you will click on the link that is on our website. The theater program dialogue sessions, as we move into March, the recreation team has added uh, theater to um, our opportunities for recreation. If you can't make it in person, there's no problem. A virtual um, opportunity is there as well on March 24th at noon. Uh, let's see. You can register for those events. Um, again, the next one is upcoming from 12 to 1 o'clock p.m. Next event is Oreo Club. Oreo Club happens next on March 24th, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. To, uh, to join the group. And it is a way to get together to explore each month's flavor and connect with other people, engage in great discussions. They talk about cookies and life and create Oreo-themed uh, Oreo artwork and collaborate on a customized ah. Oreo, Oreo order to share. Oreo cookies will be provided for pickup at the Washtenaw office. 
Again, that's March 24th, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. Contact Claire at dnwml.org. We have an ongoing Spirit Inclusive Fitness Club that meets uh, virtually on Mondays and Wednesdays from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. Some upcoming <clears throat> sessions are meditation um, and sit and hit, Zumba, yoga, balance fitness, Sam's workout jams. If you're interested, please contact Mark at dnwml.org. Trivia Tuesdays, do you have, uh, do you just have to know or do you already have the answers? Find out by joining us online for Tuesday Trivia and introducing the 2023 games. Our club will be adding to the laughter and learning by adding new activities of our time together. There will be new themes every week starting January 10th. So be sure to follow our face, follow us on Facebook. Join as a team or play on your own. These events happen Tuesdays, 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. To register, contact Robin or email Robin at dnwml.org. Next, I'd like to announce Movie Club, All Ages and Abilities. Um, weekly on Thursdays from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. And to, to register for the Movie Club, contact Anna at dnwml.org. Art programming, virtual art, and in-person sessions are happening ongoing. Please see our calendar for more information. Um, in-person art sessions are Mondays, 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. at the Washtenaw office. And let's see, in the virtual art class is weekly on Thursdays from 1.30 to 3 o'clock p.m. Um, I have some other exciting news that the um, Disability Network is now part of the American Dream Employment Network. And the um, AIDEN is called. It's a national administrative employment network providing services to individuals that are receiving Social Security uh, administration disability benefits under the Ticket to Work program. For individuals that are receiving uh, those benefits, um, we want to invite all our current um, clients or customers who are receiving those benefits to explore, um, to let us help you find work through the Ticket to Work program and um, talk to you about work incentives and work skills. There is a Safe Connections group that meets weekly on Wednesdays, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, and then there's the Disability Community Action Lab that uh, met today, but it meets the third Wednesday of the month, 12 o'clock to 1.30 p.m. to edu educate consumers on relevant advocacy issues and provide the expertise and resources to support them in pursuing their advocacy goals. Ages 16 plus and all abilities are welcome. Interest in advocacy is required and experience in advocacy is not required. The Blindness and Low Vision Support Group meets the first Wednesday of the month, 12 o'clock to one o'clock p.m. For more information, please contact Renee at dnwml.org. And lastly, the Caring connection for, um, for parents that have disabilities and are raising children. Um, they share stories, strategies, and resources for um, better living. And further, we grow in our pride and identities as disabled people while navigating life as parents and caregivers. That group meets every other Thursday, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. And you can contact Celeste at uh, dnwml.org. And finally, I would like to tell you about our loan closet. If anyone is in need of um, such things as a cane or a walker and they uh, are not able to afford it or they just can't navigate health care, they're welcome to call the center and get more information. We do have a loan closet. Sometimes people drop off donated items. And that concludes the events for Disability Network, Washtenaw, Monroe, and Livingston. 
Does anyone Ashley, have any questions? Thank you. A lot of, a lot of great things there, Joyce. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Kathleen, You're you welcome. have your hand up. I do. So Joyce, uh, pre-pandemic, there was a group that met for low hearing, uh, hearing impaired individuals. I think it was run by Pam McGinty. Um, we had tried to, to get together, but the group sort of faded. Is there any, uh, is it on your radar? Is that going to start up again? It is. Um, and I will try to have more information next meeting um, or in one of the groups where I see you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a personal interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you, you so much, Joyce. And as always, thank you uh, to the Disability Network, uh, Washtenaw Livingston now, uh, for all of their work and congratulations uh, on the change, uh, you know, change for the better and um, all, all the all great things. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Well, it'd help if I could unmute myself. Um, next. Uh, we have the Partners in Access Community Engagement Committee report with Alex Gotches, Alex Gossage, and Rachel Hawkins. Well, good afternoon again, everybody, or good evening, almost. Uh, not a whole lot to report this month. Of one, as Zach mentioned earlier, we did talk about uh, the visions. Uh, conference coming up here and making sure that we do participate in that as as I know we were able to meet some new folks last year and connect with people in the community and overall it was just a good event to be part of if there are other events like that that you um, that any of the commissioners think we should be uh, on the lookout for and, and possibly uh, trying to table that in the future do let us know so that we can make sure to put that on our radar and hopefully uh, get signed up if it if it makes sense uh, the other piece I just wanted to mention briefly, and uh, the council member is not on with us. I don't think she was, I know at one point, uh, but um, recently a community member had come forward concerned about how uh, uh, accessible parking spaces in, uh, in condominium complexes were um, designated. Uh, he comes from Chicago, where at one point, those accessible parking spaces in condominium complexes uh, were actually things that uh, could be given to specific residents. Then those residents could actually turn around and sell the spots. Uh, and um, he he worked to pass a bill in Chicago uh, that basically uh, put those accessible parking spots back to being uh, a, a community asset. So available for the community, not privately owned or anything of that nature. He was concerned that um, there might be a similar thing happening here in Ann Arbor. But when I last spoke with uh, the council member the other day, uh, we think uh, that that Ann Arbor and or Michigan is is um, is looking at it as a community asset, but the, the legal department at the city is currently checking just to make sure. And that's really been the big uh, the big pieces that we have come up with recently. Thank you, Alex. I mean, great work uh, there with, uh, you know, uh, that committee. And, you know, we're we're very grateful for the Partners in Access Committee and, and the work doing there. And, and and I agree. You know, I've heard that information about the parking spaces and, uh, you know, it's it's definitely uh, an issue that's that's, you know, needs needs some work. So thank you for that. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Larry. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sort of not where I can answer it, where I can raise my hand, but um, the two things that I did mention in that to look, to start looking at is one, I mentioned that um, as, as visions comes up that maybe, uh, and, and I, I, I gave this to Denise, Denise had said she'd look it up eventually and um, to braille up about 20 copies of the flyer for uh, to hand out at visions to those who are visually impaired. And I also put, I also uh, mentioned that um, it seems to me, and I it just, just for observation, not for anything to do yet, but it seems to me that they're taking a lot of the uh, handicapped parking spaces and turning them into pickup lanes. And I don't know if that's a problem yet or not, but 
we've noticed that a lot of the, uh, where, you know, the, the lanes where you pick up like at Buddy's Pizza or something like that are being turned in, uh, uh, the handicap signs are being taken away. Now, I don't know if they're putting extra parking in or not, but that, I've, that's what I've noticed recently. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, I think that's a very, you know, unfortunate development uh, to hear. But, um, you know, I hope that, you know, if they're taking spaces away that they are, you know, sub <coughs> getting more spaces in if, if that's the case. But uh, thank you, Larry, for making well, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm hoping. That's I, I, we, we've seen that observation and I just thought I'd mention it because I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I've just seen a lot of it. You can't get up as close and mm -hmm. the parking spaces are a little different. So I'm not sure if they're adding or not, but it's something to just keep in mind to look at. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Larry. Um, as far as, uh, uh, you know, that goes, I hope that, again, you know, there's, if there's anything that, you know, the commission can do uh, in terms of helping with those issues, uh, please, those on the Partners and Access Committee, uh, do not he hesitate to reach out to, to myself and, um, you know, we can see what we can do on that. I also have an update on Ann Arbor Inclusive, um, yes, thank if it's you, okay Rachel. if we change topics. Sure. Um, so I do have an update from Ann Arbor Inclusive. So they have a new show premiering this Friday, uh, 4.30 p.m. on CTN Channel 16 um, and CTN's YouTube channel at um, hashtag CTN Ann Arbor. Um, so the, uh, the new guest for this month is uh, Megan Winters, co-founder and CEO of Ableview. Um, so they'll be talking about the accessibility information platform, um, know before you go photos, virtual tours, um, questions about accessibility. Um, and then they're gonna be speaking with the Mind Center um, for their April guest. So more to come on that. Awesome, outstanding. Megan mm -hmm. is a great friend and great colleague and uh, doing some great things with Able. Mm -hmm. so looking forward uh, to seeing her. Uh, on Ann Arbor Inclusive and uh, doing that episode. So great yep. work, absolutely. And thank you to uh, CTN and the Community Television Network and for their work with Ann Arbor Inclusive and all the things that they're doing with that. Thank you, Rachel. All right, moving on, uh, we have an update uh, for recruiting activity with Vice Chairman Larry Keeler. The only update I have currently is that uh, Ms. Radcliffe's uh, appointment had its first uh, vote at City Hall, uh, City Council, and should have the second vote pretty soon. And if that happens, we shall have a new commissioner in April. If it goes, if City Hall votes are in. All right, that's thank the, you. That's Larry. all I can No, thank you. Yep. Um, next, uh, I just wanted to open it up really quick. Um, I know that uh, our council liaison has just joined, and I know that she, um, you know, does uh, participate uh, in the partners and access uh, committee meetings uh, at uh, from time to time. So. I wanted to give uh, our council liaison, uh, Councilwoman uh, Aisha Ghazi Edwin, uh, an opportunity uh, to speak on some of the things that she's been working on. Uh, if she can hear us and if she's able. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Councilwoman. Member. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Aisha. I, I apologize for repeatedly falling off. I'm driving back from Lansing and uh, just had some internet connectivity issues. So, um, Chair Damon, can you share with me? Were you able to share any of the updates that you and I discuss? You know, if I not, was, that's fine. No, no, I was saving those for for my chair report, so I haven't gotten to those yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, good. So, um, so there's a few things that have been going on. Uh, specifically, you know, council has been trying. Well, we've approved this Main Street street closures that happen every year. Downtown closes down Main Street, and a few other streets. And I um, 
called our community advisory, I forgot his full position name, but Derek Delacourt, he works for the city. And I asked him, how will this impact accessible parking? And so he took a look at it and he said, you know, it probably will. So I basically suggested, can we please designate accessible parking along all the roads that are immediately adjacent to the street footage? Um, and he's looking into that and he thinks it is possible because, you know, this is all coming from when I, when I thought of the street closures, they're great, but like what happens to people with disabilities and older adults who get dropped off right in front of businesses, right? So they're going to add more accessible parking. And then I also asked if they could make sure those parking is by curb cuts and, potentially even map out accessible routes. You know, the DDA has currently a map on their website where all the accessible parking spots light up. And I said, I think that we need to A, add more, and then also show accessible routes so that, you know, people with disabilities and older adults can plan their visits to downtown in advance. I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting some feedback. Are yeah, you Larry, could you, could you mute, please, sir? Um, anyway, so that is happening, and I'm meeting with Maura, I believe her last name is Thomas, of DDA tomorrow, to just talk about accessible parking in general and how do we make sure that accessibility is always a part of our things like street closures and events and fairs. So I'll be meeting with her tomorrow and I can give you guys an update. There's a few other things I've been looking into, you know, um, Commissioner Gossage brought up some issues around condo associations and accessible parking. And I've had the city's legal team look into it and it looks like it's not an issue yet. Essentially what was happening were condo well, in other cities, condo associations have had the ability to auction off accessible parking spots to people who are not tenants with disabilities, which is ridiculous. So in talking to the legal team, I said, is this happening here? And they said, no. And then they looked into it further and it seems like state law would preempt that from happening. So in Michigan, unlike in Illinois, where a resolution like similar to this was passed in Chicago, um, that couldn't happen here. Am I making sense? Does anyone yeah, have questions so. about that? No, I, okay. I think so. I, I, I agree with you though. I think, I think the fact that they're able to quote auction off uh, parking spaces Ridiculous. for the highest bidder is, is preposterous. I don't, uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't see where that makes sense, especially when it impacts uh, accessibility. Yeah. I've also asked, um, I've asked like the engineering department, the transportation department to give me a report on, you know, planning has uh, passed a resolution to get rid of parking minimums in the city, which I think is excellent. And it really, you know, is in alignment with some of our goals around a two zero and client, you know, just in general. It's good for us and for affordable, the cost of housing is more affordable, but what it means is if a new development decides not to offer any parking, they don't have to offer any accessible parking either. So then that leaves an entire segment of the population out of being able to rent or live in a certain place, right? Um, I've asked them to give me a report on how this may be impacting the community. I've met with them about it and I said, you know, can we... Can we put, I'm sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear my navigation. Can we put some sort of something in there just to mandate accessible parking spots? And he said that accessible parking is always mandated because of ADA. It has to be a certain ratio, right? But that's only if other parking is offered. If there's no parking offered, no accessible parking has to be offered. So then I also said, you know, can we designate Ann Arbor accessible parking spots? for use for a condo or, or an apartment. And that is a more complex issue because there has to be a certain number of accessible spots like per block. Okay. And it, it throws off the number. 
either way, they're getting together and they're going to give me a report because I want to keep an eye on this. And, and I think that um, that's right now, that's that's the best move. You know, council member, I completely agree. And as as these, you know, building projects continue uh, as building and, and approval of, of more apartment buildings and more buildings in the city, uh, you know, continues to increase. Uh, this situation is going to continue to be uh, paramount in terms of ad addressing this. And so I'm grateful that yeah. you put that on the forefront uh, already and that you're already, you know, requiring that these particular entities give us answers in terms of, um, you know, how this is affecting ac accessibility and why uh, inadequacies of parking and accessibility are acceptable. Because quite frankly, uh, and this is just my opinion. I don't speak for anyone else but myself. But to me, that's just that's that's incorrect. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'm grateful for you uh, being a voice for us on this. And uh, thank you for keeping us informed. Yeah, I'll keep you all updated when I get that report. I, I I'm pretty sure, you know, I'll share it with all of you and we'll see. And we'll just we'll just stay on top of it because, you know, getting rid of parking minimums is important. At the same time, we need to remember who is being left out of every policy decision that we make and we don't make, you know? Um, so, and that's this commission's job. Um, and then in regards to the ADA or accessibility coordinator job description, Laura Orta has been working on that. And she did send me a recent copy where she asked for my input. And I, I did recommend that there be some more inclusion of wording like disability justice, doing general trainings on accessibility. I felt like it was a little too ADA compliance coordinator heavy. And I think that as we all know with people with disabilities, like ADA is, it's, you know, it's antiquated, it's old, it's not the best we can do. And we really need, when we think of accessibility, we need to go above and beyond ADA and it's about navigating both invisible and visible infrastructure, right? Absolutely. So she's going to make... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, she's going to make those changes and it's not going to be posted till May. So I'm going to reach out to her about, and Zach, maybe, you know, I'll CC you on that email about her sending a, a final copy to all of us. That would be great. Before. And, and uh, Laura is actually on the meeting today too. So uh, thank you for bringing this to our attention and um and uh you know i look forward to hearing you know more about this this processes uh once uh, uh laura um you know can present to us today as well absolutely yeah that's great hi laura i didn't know you were on but that's great that she's here mm -hmm. so um yeah so there's that update and then the other update that i had was oh i am meeting with the executive director of AAATA. Uh, Matthew Carpenter soon about paratransit. So I'll keep you all updated. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, that's it amazing, for me. Amazing that was... work by our council liaison. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, a little council bit of a tornado, right? but yeah. okay, thanks for <laughs> thanks goodness. for bearing with me. Thanks. All. Yeah. Well, no, no. Be safe out there. Absolutely. And again, thank you for all of this. It's outstanding work. And, uh, you know, I definitely appreciate you keeping Kodai informed on all of this it's making a huge huge difference and uh again you know uh anything that you know myself or any of us if you whatever you need from us hopefully we can provide that uh to you as well great thanks so much thank you all right uh moving moving on i'm gonna move back down um to i know larry vice chairman you had covered um recruiting so we were gonna go uh, to you for the Transportation Commission update. And I know I had asked you to, to mute, so I'll wait for you to unmute, but thank you very much, Larry. And uh, if you have an update for transportation, uh, let us know now. Ah, I'm here, let me back through. Sorry about that, I had a sneezing thing that I didn't think was coming on and I knew I was next, so I was um, prepared and then then uh, councilwoman was on and I started sneezing. So <laughs> sorry about that. So a lot of the transportation commission report was on, uh, of all things, there's a debate 
there's debates going on about putting sidewalks in in front of Earhart Village and on Brook Street. And these, uh, so some people want them and a lot of people don't because they're, uh, they consider it private property and they don't. Apparently, they don't want people walking by their places, but uh, our, uh, we want to fill in sidewalk gaps, especially for people that, you know, for people that don't want to have to walk and cross the street and then walk back. And people, you know, like in chairs or like myself, who like to stay on, a, uh, be able to stay on the side of the street that I want to be on instead of cross and recross. So they're having a big debate and, and uh, some of these places are trying to stop build, uh, from building side, uh, stop the city from building sidewalks. So okay. that was, that was a, big, a big thing that took over a lot of the meeting's time. And then uh, our year-end policy and our, our um, our year end policy passed and, and our policy management thing passed for next year or for this coming year. And, um, some of the, uh, projects like the North side of Gettys will be started in the, in the summer. And then another thing they talked about was they're coming up with something, I guess they got dashboards and I think they're on the computer and I, I, I have to understand them a little better, but apparently you can, Look these up. Uh, use these for pavement conditions and a lot of other, a lot of other driving conditions. You know, and, and like for maintenance on the road, and for um, you know traffic uh, uh, jams and stuff like that. You can look to see just about any kind of road condition you want on these these boards, and they're categorized into different categories. And then. Uh, <clears throat> there was um, we talked. Uh, A A A T A was talking about um, getting their budget for uh, y uh, YTC Ypsilanti Transit Center, and um, they put they want to put uh, they want to start putting texts some uh, something where you can text your text your buses, you know, to be check to check them to see if they're on time and also to check to see where bus stops are at. And if I missed anything of importance, it's in the transportation link. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. And thank you for all your work uh, as you sit on the transportation commission for us as well. Um, yeah, that's coming up in about an hour and a half. That's right. Thank you. Yep. All right, next, uh, moving on to our report for the U of M Council for Disability Concerns meeting update with Commissioner Solomon. Matthew. Hi, um, just reporting on the meeting which took place yesterday and I wanna pass along a quotation with which the meeting began, which I thought, well, I wanted you to hear. Uh, it's from the late Judy Hoyman and the complete quotation reads, I want to see a feisty group of disabled people around the world. If you don't respect yourself, and if you don't demand what you believe in for yourself, you're not going to get it. So um, the bulk of the meeting was taken up by a presentation from Winter McLeod, who is um, a DEI intern with the Office of Information and Technology Services at the University of Michigan, and has been working on an accessible meetings checklist in which um, organizers of meetings and events can kind of run through some important issues around accessibility. And so we got an overview of that protocol which encompasses, you know, everything from scheduling to food and drink to captions to marketing, a uh, fairly comprehensive set of guidelines, which are going to be publicized and made available to the community, uh, I think, sometime later in the month. 
that was the the main topic of the meeting was about accessibility and how to kind of embed best practices around accessibility for UM meetings and events. I think there's still a lot of um, education that needs to go on in that area, but this felt like uh, this resource is a terrific place to start. I hope it gets wide publicity. Uh, there was a fair amount of feedback and that was really our task yesterday. Uh, any questions, comments? I just have a quick comment for you, Matthew. Uh, thank you for sharing that quote. Uh, I really do agree with you. And, you know, Miss Human was a legend uh, in the disability community uh, for all the work that she's done. And, you know, let me just say too, you know, I, I completely agree that we have to be feisty. We have to uh, continue uh, to press forward and push on. And if we do not, uh, uh, you know, speak up, uh, then, then we will not continue to see progress. And so, I really appreciate Matthew uh, what you shared, and then of course, very interesting um, with uh, with what Winter presented as well in terms of uh, accessibility meetings. I think uh, that's important as well. So, thank you very much uh, for that, and thank you to the U of M Council for Disability Concerns uh, for all the work uh, that they're doing. And Matthew, as uh, as you guys have events or different things coming up, uh, please keep us informed, and we can do our best to to support. Uh, the U of M Council for Disability Concerns. Just for the record, for the record, um, that quotation was truncated in the materials we got at the meeting. I had to go to the ACLU website to find the feisty part, but I felt it was important to restore that to sure. the original quotation that was, again, truncated for whatever reason uh, for our meeting. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that as well. And I'm grateful that you gave us the original uh, quote uh, because very important. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, uh, we have the Director of Organizational Equity and her report with Laura Orta. Laura, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. So excuse me for coughing if I'm going to cough in your ear. I'm fighting a wonderful cold that my grandchild gave me this weekend. <laughs> so um, I have sent to Denise this current draft. It's nowhere near final draft. After talking with Isha that, um, you know, put some of that language in, it will certainly be the new terminology, something that <clears throat> I am looking for anybody that interviews to be talking about. Um, I, like I said, I, I crafted a few through a few things in there. Overarchingly, I know that the legal team wants to say a lot of the ADA because, right, that's that's what they're thinking. We need to be. They don't see it as accessibility justice, and they they don't necessarily see it. Um, as when advertising it and promoting it, right? They want to make sure everything is clear cut. So, but I was able to go through and that is my intention, a thousand percent, you know, invisible and visible as well as all of these issues. One of the things I'd love your feedback on, or I'll give you a couple of things. Uh, first, the requirements for the job the um the required over preferred the required right now i have a bachelor's degree and then a couple of years of experience in programming or training right really broad categories as much as i could get and then we have a, a, a thing that we put in here in ann arbor which is or equivalency and to me that's too, too broad, right? We miss so many candidates, but also hopefully it's like, please just apply. <laughs> so, you know, there's that, that crossroads that I'm trying to find a good thing for. Um, so look at that and see if you feel like, oh, you know, a bachelor's degree is too much to really need as long as they have this certification, right? Like 
how do we want to switch these things on? The other thing that I tried to do with it is in the um, the bullets that I received from the city administrator originally and then from HR, I always tried to tie the job duties back into um, the bullets and make sure that the requirements align with those, right? I'm very much a go back to the mission and make sure how everything ties in. So if you have any questions about why is this one in here when, you know, you're saying these things, any feedback at all, I am absolutely open to. And certainly as we move forward, to me, the real big areas that you will have better control over is the questions, because there are no like specific questions that I have to include in the interview process. So, and we can also work with the recruiting team who will be handling all the applications and doing the first initial round for us and really talk to them about this is, we're looking for people to understand this terminology. We do not want someone who's stuck in 1980s, 1990s, ADA, and that's where they're moving forward from here. So, uh, Absolutely appreciate everyone's assistance thus far and continue to, you know, make the tweaks on it. It we won't have it funded until the new fiscal year. So, but I'm trying to get everything as approved as possible to do the interviews so that person can start as soon as possible. Any questions at all for me? Well, I just have a quick comment, uh, Laura. Thank you so much. Uh, I can't tell you. Uh, how grateful uh, I am personally just for the efforts thus far uh, put in to this uh, for this position, but also understanding your eagerness as well uh, to get this position posted and filled uh, so that we can have an ADA coordinator uh, who is working directly with the city and directly with us. And so we're very excited for that. And, and you know, I'm filled with gratitude for your and your efforts thus far. Yeah. I, I would like to echo council member Edwin's uh, uh, words. And I, I hope this person can have a background in, in uh, disability justice as well mm -hmm. yeah. uh, as ADA, because uh, as, as uh, uh, Commissioner Solomon mentioned, the feisty portion uh, of what we do uh, is important. And we can be feisty and we can still uh, do it uh, in, a, in a classy and diplomatic way. Uh, Absolutely. But I think, I think having that feisty portion uh, of disability justice, knowing the law, knowing uh, those important aspects uh, is also very important as well. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I really think that as we move forward, one of the things I like to do in the interview process is not just ask questions and wait for the person to respond, because that's very gotcha to me, especially as a neurodivergent person. I get telling a story and I'm way over here <laughs> when I should be over here. So I like to present case studies and, you know, two to five sentences about, and we can use any of the issues that you all have encountered and just make it a, you know, generalized information and ask, how would you handle that? What are the steps that are required? So to me, the the most exciting part is going to be writing the interview questions because that's really where we'll be able to tease out what the individual is and how they handle interactions. Absolutely. I like that a lot. This is council member Edwin. It's weird to say that. This is Aisha. Um, I like that a lot. And I also want to say, I do appreciate that. Like the second that I gave Laura some of that feedback, she was like, absolutely about disability justice. Laura, I also understand like for legal reasons, you may not be able to say certain qualifications or criteria, but then in somewhere as a bullet point, and you've already agreed to doing this, writing something about how this, how those values play out in action. Like creating a culture of disability justice, helping to provide education or training for various departments, things like that. So I, I I appreciate your work and your openness yeah. to helping us get Thank get you. it right. I think the case examples are also also perfect. Um, just because I'm sure together we can come up with some good ones for you in terms of common things that we encounter. Um, yeah. So I I think 
it's great that you're making the interviewees give you applicable knowledge to show their skills and their thought process because that's that's so important not just an outcome correct and one of the things i always do it's not a practice yet in the city but will be one day soon is i provide the interviewees the questions at least 15 minutes if not a half hour prior to their interview time because yeah, that great. takes that pop quiz gotcha feeling out of it as well so you know it, it's not anything that's a secret everything i do is foyable so share and share alike. The other thing I wanted to bring to the council is um, the city is moving forward with our comprehensive plan, what in the past used to be terminology master plan, but that, you know, has negative connotations to it. So the um, correct language is comprehensive plan. And I, I am situated on the group within inside the city that is doing that. They brought me on I had a great opportunity to interview our two people that made it through the RFP process and their teams. And we found a team that is much more justice and equity focused than another team was. And I have continuously put in the people that are specifically in charge, in charge of it, that we need representation from this commission. And so once we start moving it forward and kicking it off, which will probably be in the fall, it's going to take 10 to 12 years, right? They do a couple of years for the study for us. And then, but what Michelle Bennett was saying earlier about getting out to individuals, you know, that's, we need to do a better job of it. And one of the ways is I actually got them to put in these uh, case study questions. And both teams that interviewed said, we've never had an interview like this before, right? It's it's new. And um, they, we asked them some real specific things about how are they going to break through the barrier that we experience as employees in Ann Arbor, trying to reach out to the community and really listened for them to have those inclusive conversations and and how they will overcome things. And so I'm really excited about the consulting team that has been chosen, and I will make certain um, to bring all of you in on that. And maybe, you know, you send a representative in to talk to these groups or you hold sessions, whatever, but I will make sure that, you know, I'm always circling back with all of you. So that's all I have. Yeah, thank you, Laura. I mean, again, wonderful work. We appreciate, um, you know, you being uh, just a great ally for us. And uh, I, I look forward to continuing to, to working with you on this process and uh, getting things moving forward. Thank you. Awesome. Not just an ally, a member of the community. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Indeed. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next. Uh, moving on, we have the City Personnel Report with Denise. Good afternoon. Um, the City is welcoming Shariah Ashford, Housing Commission Administrative Assistant, Talio Deacon, Engineering, Civil Engineer Specialist, Ryan Dufleck, Water Treatment Service, Water Utility Technician, Christopher Hoxteller, Engineering Transportation Technician, Rolando Munez Jr., Water Treatment Services, Water Utility Technician. A retirement farewell to Jack Foster, Police Detective. That's it. All right, thank you, Denise. And uh, welcome. welcome to all the new staff and uh, to the outgoing detective. I hope he has a great retirement, absolutely. All right, well, moving on uh, to the chair report. Uh, a lot of what I was going to say, believe it or not, uh, was covered, but I did wanna mention, uh, as Joyce mentioned earlier uh, in the CIL report, there is a um, center, uh, there's the theater dialogue sessions 
uh, at the uh, Disability Network Washtenaw Livingston. Uh, coming up, it's going to be virtual Friday, March 24th, 12 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, hopefully, if some of you are interested in theater and also this program and sort of wanting to give uh, Robin Bennett some feedback on what they can incorporate, how the theater uh, sessions can be helpful uh, to those in the community, uh, would definitely encourage all of you uh, to attend. You know, personally, as a performer with a disability, I think that theater and the arts uh, really does amazing things uh, for uh, not only being able to uh, act out different situations uh, with disabilities, but also, uh, you know, helps to, to be sort of a team aspect uh, in, you know, working with a different cast and, and crew and being able to uh, also be a great social activity. So I just encourage all of you, if you're available, uh, to join that virtual session Friday, March 24th at 12 p.m. That is really uh, the only thing I have for the chair report at this time. So thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, let's see. Next, moving on uh, under old business, uh, we do have the, uh, we want to formalize uh, the kind of recruiting procedure. Uh, so I wanted to just talk a little bit more about that briefly with you guys. Uh, so Larry Keeler and I have talked a little bit about the recruiting procedures and kind of what we can do going forward to ensure that the recruiting processes um, is effective and we can, you know, I would say in a very, you know, timely manner, be able to review applications and then get back to the applicants in a timely manner. And so I wanted to know if all of you had some feedback in terms of the recruiting procedures. I know we've talked in the past about forming a recruiting subcommittee so that uh, Larry could have a bit of assistance uh, with reviewing some of the applications that are submitted and then contacting these individuals uh, to sort of know what their, their passion is for helping the community and also being a part of the commission and then going forth to then present their application to the commission. But of course, you know, Larry is just one man and I'd like to be able uh, as a commission to give him some some help and so i wanted to know from the commission is a recruiting subcommittee is that something uh that the commission is open to uh in our and would anyone be willing to participate in recruiting activities uh with larry to assist him in reviewing applications as well as reaching out to those uh applicants that we feel uh can be appointed to the commission so I just wanted to open that up for a little bit of discussion. Commissioner, oh, my hands up. Okay. Oh, Larry. Oh, go uh, ahead. Let him go first. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go to Commissioner Solomon, and then you, Larry. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of foreground what I thought, what I perceived to be one of the challenges of that role, which is precisely the issue that was brought up in the equitable engagement, how to really get the word out beyond one's personal networks. And that's a really tough question. I don't certainly have an answer to it. I don't really even have a good sense of how to tackle it, but um, that does seem to be one of the challenges. I don't know whether a committee would help or not. I'm curious what, what Larry will say. Yeah, go ahead. Does that mean I'm not? Larry? Okay. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, in, in, in the past, what we would do for recruiting is we'd find, we'd, we'd go out, we'd, uh, we'd have a couple of events too. We'd find, uh, we'd, we'd, we'd look at, inter we'd interview people. You know, one, uh, one of us would interview people. And when we had a, a, a recruiting committee of three or two or three, we'd, we'd, interview them some, you know, maybe go out for coffee somewhere or something and interview them and just, you know, get their, their take on why they'd want to be. We'd have them attend a, uh, a commission meeting or two. And then we would have them speak, you know, in, in a public comment section like we have or recently. And then we'd, uh, we'd vote and then send it on to council. Like we did the last one. That was our basic procedure. Now, the only, 
<clears throat> the only thing that would help is if people knew, uh, if I had somebody, maybe I got more than one person's opinion on, you know, like if I, we had two people, if I had another person and we could both talk to the, the person at the same time or that's something and, and get their opinion too, because of course my opinion, I might think a candidate's good and you might go, mm, but we're, the, the committee is just a clearing house or a, a, we're kind of a, um, a gateway into the commission as well. Cause I mean, we've also interviewed some people that, well, quite frankly, wouldn't be to the commission's best interest to have on there. And we've interviewed some others that were really good. So um, that was the procedure. And if, 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 if anybody's got, has a, a, any other way to change that procedure, I mean, obviously right now we've changed it by uh, having them come up on the Zoom meeting. But if anybody has a, a way to change that that they think is better, I'm more than open to it. I just need to know what I'm doing. Commissioner Mosak has her hand up. Okay. I want to put my hand up too. Oh, thank you. After Commissioner Mosak. Hi. So my question is, I think it's time for us to start thinking out of the box with the regards to recruitment. And what I mean by that is we don't have a social media presence. We're not on Facebook. We're not on Twitter, Instagram, any of those areas that might gain, gain us a broader audience. You know, our younger folks don't network like we did or we do or we think about. Um, and so that is something. Also, I'm wondering why we don't utilize our, uh, like our library more. The library, uh, all the libraries have areas where you can post information. It's usually for 501c3s, but we're not, we're not a money-making agency. I don't know why we couldn't get something up on the board saying, hey, we're recruiting because we, we're, we're missing a whole swath of people. So I think I, as we move forward, I would very much like for us to think about our recruiting process and how we can change it up so that we can get a better, get the word out there better than we are. So, I, I agree, Kathleen, great, great points. Uh, Larry, go ahead. So you would be, like if we get a Facebook page open, we could talk about, um, give, give a, a, a way to um, show people that were, uh, of, uh, that they were more interested, that there was interest in having them apply. And we could also, we used to put stuff down at City Hall for recruiting. At one point, we had flyers down at uh, the hall, entrance to City Hall, but I think the, the library thing is actually really great too. Or, and, and even Center for Independent Living, if they'd let us put them, uh, a few pamphlets down there, flyers. Yeah, in terms of social media, I think it do, could do so much more than just recruiting. If we had a page that even if the only thing that was on there at the beginning was, this is when we meet, this is who we are, this is what we do, are you interested? Uh, you know, that it could start like, a broader public dialogue, that's all. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I agree. I, yeah, I agree with you, Kathleen. And, you know, I've brought that up uh at prior meetings i believe and you know i was wondering denise i mean have we talked to the city about whether they can recreate those accounts for us i mean i can reach out and set up a meeting if you three would like to um speak to the communications department it's a one rush yeah absolutely uh, okay. i think it's worth an yeah. ask absolutely. because i forgot our old our old one and it wasn't used for much so we had one and I forgot what it was. And I was trying to look for it and I couldn't, couldn't remember exactly what it was, but we used to sort of have one, but I think we just opened up a new one. Uh, uh, Commissioner Hawkins. Commissioner um, Post, I mean, Poster and then Commissioner Hawkins. Uh, yes, I was thinking that um, we could also on the, um, on the site, on the, um, Facebook or the communication that we could um, bring up some issues that might be um, challenging to people that might have questions about certain things and how to get help or whatever that could be in there. Resources? Yeah. 
Well, I could see doing a lot of stuff with that. Like, you know, they, people could put up things like, Hey, we got a, we got an issue here. Could, you know, do you guys, do you guys do this? I, uh, that would be, I, I could see a lot of communication coming out of there. Yeah. And I would be, I'd be willing to help Larry with the um, recruiting as far as looking at the applications, the applicants. Um, I, I was having a problem with my, my, um, my, my, my computer or whatever you want to call this my zoom so i finally got my picture up there okay got it thank you deb commissioner hawkins hey um so i just wanted to add as well i think in terms of the public comment that we get they're the most serious extreme examples and i think there's a lot of things we're probably just not you know, people may not think to report, um, but, you know, are significant barriers to people in the community. Uh, well, um, so I think there's definitely a lot of good way to um, organize with the other disability groups in the in the metro Detroit, southeastern Michigan area, um, that there are a number of other organizations that we can highlight their events for our, our for the Ann Arbor Ipsy people to go to as well. So I think there's a, a lot of good things that could come from that. Great, great point, Rachel. I agree with you. I think that that cross connection is is also very important because the the disability community, just from my limited experience, reaches far and wide across the state. Uh, so yeah, we need to we need to utilize that as well. I agree. All great points, um, and Deb, thank you for for you know being interested and in, you know reviewing applications uh, and things like that as well. Uh, thank you. Any anything else uh, on sort of you know the recruiting procedures? I mean, should we again should we create a, a subcommittee just like you know partners in access or uh, you know, transportation? You know, uh, I mean. You know, should we create another committee for this so that those can 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 meet and do that? Or right now, should we just, you know, incorporate those who want to help out and and connect them with Larry? Well, what it, we well it kind of is a committee at the moment. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's an activity, but it's kind of a committee. It just needs more people. Right. And if if uh, anyone wants to be part of it, they can be part of it. I don't even have to run this thing. It can just, they can they can do it if they want. It's, it's a get a couple get a, another person or two because then we can just and we can give a more comprehensive report too. Would um, Larry? Would do you think this would be? Um, because I I know right now we're doing our community engagement and our um, partners and access together. Do you feel like this is something that we need another committee for, or can we merge it into like our purview of what we're already managing? Because it is <laughs> community engagement and it is related to accessibility? I suppose we could put it into the, if the, if the that, community I, access committee, but uh, we, we, we would be in a way separate, different from that, but we could probably put it on the, in the same meeting since it's been short. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, if you guys wanted, if, if any of the, you guys wanted to help in that, that's fine. And if, if Commissioner Poster, for example, wanted to attend that meeting too, then we could just do that as because we haven't had a lot of business in there anyway. So yeah, that, we could just that's, fuse that in there, and I'd still give the report for that, and uh, we could just fuse that in there and, and use that time period for that one too, if, if uh, you and Alex agreed. Yeah, and that and that's the second Wednesday at five p.m. And Denise at always sends those out as well. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Uh, that seems practical. That seems practical to me, you guys. But uh, uh, you know, well, let me know. You know, let me know if if there's, uh, I guess, any naysayers on that. But uh, I, that seems practical to me. It does. I, I especially yeah. since there's so much overlap. Um, it, just in between the two committees, it really makes sense. Um, to put it all together. Um, at, you know, as subsets of the same. Same committee. Yeah, I agree. Now, is this now 
the, the, the question I have, and it's something for you to think about, is the procedural line I'm following the proper, pretty much the proper thing to do in, at, at the moment is uh, interview, uh, get a hold of the can, uh, a candidate, then talk to the candidate, invite the candidate to a, uh, a meeting or two if they want, and also to uh, identify themselves and public comment, then vote on sending it to the mayor's office and therefore the city council. Um, should I continue to follow that? Or do you want me to do something different? You know, that's a and good And if you question. do, let me know, because like I said, I just need to know what I'm doing for sure, because yes. in the past few years, it's been a little different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a matter of, you know, following the pr processes, but just including um, the, the community engagement committee in those processes. So, you know, for example, when we receive an application, uh, myself, you, Larry, um, Deb, and then those on community engagement, uh, receive that. and then... Uh, my hope is, is that at that particular meeting for community engagement, uh, then that can be an agenda item for you guys and, uh, and all involved to review the application uh, and then, uh, you know, then go about uh, setting up a time to just either call and or interview that applicant uh, so that going forward, uh, that applicant can then be uh, brought to the full <coughs> Now, of course, this is just my interpretation, but uh, what are your feelings on that? Well, I think I think that would be what I'd like to do is be able to uh, look at the application, contact the person, the the applicant, and then um, bring the applicant up at the uh, partners and access meeting, you know, and and then uh, we'll discuss. And if anybody else wants to reach out from partners and access, we could do that. And then uh, have her present, have, have him or her present to the commission. Denise? Which would be... Um, I would say, oh, ahead, um, would you like me to outline the processes that you are doing now and then have those ready to review for the next PIA meeting? And then you can discuss it and yeah. then bring back to the full commission in April's meeting or at April's meeting. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And I, I, I would agree with that. What about, what about the rest of the commission? I think yeah. that sounds great, Denise. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is Zach. Uh, you know, I have no problem with that, Denise. I think, uh, you know, that's, uh, it eliminates confusion. It's transparent and, uh, you know, it, it, it gives, you know, gives us all a little bit more help to deal with the applications and then right. of course with um with what kathleen mentioned about social media the only reason you guys i'm pushing to talk with the city about setting those up and just so you know the only reason i haven't set these social media uh accounts up years ago for the commission as i wanted to was because i wanted the city to have the login information i didn't want it to have to be a very confusing thing where independently they're set up and then the next thing you know uh you know, our terms end and we leave and then no one has those login information. If the city sets them up, they keep track of that login information uh, is, is my assumption. So, you know, I wanted the city to be able to have, uh, I guess, administration over those so that if we needed something, they could post it and they could also uh, kind of manage what is what is going on with those. So hopefully that's something I, communications... I think Hopefully, something that's something communications will be open to. Go ahead, Larry. I think that's what happened to the last one. I think that's what happened to our last one. Is our um, is that uh, website was managed by one of the former commissioners, and when the, that commissioner left, I think that's where the login information and everything else went. Right, and that's what I'm trying to eliminate. Is where even, oh yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, is that even if you know commissioners change or things change, 
you know, years from now that these that these um, social media accounts remain active, that uh, the events that we are a part of, such as visions, uh, that the photos get posted, that the library is also involved with that, that they can also get promoted and the city can assist. And of course, uh, I just want everyone to know uh, that I am not uh, speaking for anyone. Uh, it's all suggestive, but I hope the city would be open uh, to assisting with that because it also uh, helps the city uh, as well. So uh, hopefully we can talk to uh, Lisa Wandrash, who already does a lot of great things uh, for communications in the city. And hopefully she would be open to that for us in terms of uh, at least a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. Excellent. Okay. Uh, well, I think we've covered the um, formalizing of the recruiting procedures. Um, I just wanted to know if there's any new business at this time. Okay. Are there any other additional communications or announcements at this time from the commission? Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, I will go to Denise first and then we'll go to you. Okay, Larry? Okay. Thank okay. you. I sent the um, commission a copy of February's minutes. So if you would like to approve them before you adjourn the meeting. Okay. Um, is everyone okay with that? If we take a look at uh, February's meeting minutes to approve them, or would you like to keep them tabled? No, we can approve them. Okay. I'm taking a look. I looked in. Thank you, Denise, for doing that. No problem. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. All right, I'm looking. Um, I do not see anything at the moment that needs any correction. Uh, is there a motion to approve uh, the February meeting? I approve. I'll move to approve them. All right. Oh, Larry, Larry moves to approve and uh, I second. Okay. I second it. Thank you. Thank you. All, all in favor of approving. Um, February's meeting minutes. Um, if you have not viewed them or uh, are fine and want to unmute, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. So those meeting minutes are approved. Wonderful. All right. Well, with that, folks. Um, oh, the I announcement. Oh, I was going to make one. Yeah, I'm sorry, Vice Chairman. Go ahead. You have an announcement. I apologize. The, the announcement was we could have discussed it under new business this month. And I it, I know the meeting was pretty quick, but we could do it next month. Uh, under new business would be visions and what we're going to do for visions. Yeah. So that could be our next next um, next month agenda, what we're going to do for that. Um, that yeah. is coming up June 7th. From 11 to 4, as, as Katie mentioned, and we want to have a presence there. So great, that, great. I think. Yep. Great point, Vice Chairman. Go ahead, Larry. I think that's for next month, then, since it already rang six. Yep. I, uh, I agree. Uh, Denise, if we could put visions um, on the agenda for next month, I would love to discuss that with the full commission. Uh, sure. Should kind of be to kind of see what each commissioner is comfortable with um, in terms of uh, attending and volunteering at the table. I can tell you guys, I will be there until two o'clock. I cannot be there until four, um, but I will be there for as long as I, I will can. be there from noon to about four or so. Okay. We got at least two of us. I'll be there from noon to about four, but we could use the extra bodies out there. Absolutely. I'm going to try to, I have, an appointment, but I'm wondering if I could do it in the morning. Possibly. We could set up. Anyway. Could. Yeah. I'm supposed yeah, to be. Can. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to check into that and see, or I might just change my appointment and that way I can be a part of it. 
So I'll have to see. Well, we'd love to have you a part of it, Deb. But of course, if the appointment is super important, um, you know. They're putting, yeah, they're going to be putting me in rehab for a day or two. Okay. And it's that day. So I don't know if I can do it in the morning and then go to this thing or what. So I have to find out what what I can do before right, I can make commitment. Okay. Well, keep well, us you do whatever you can. Up. Yeah. I'm going to try to be there in the morning at least. All right. We'll keep us posted. And this uh, is at the library, right? The downtown correct. library? Okay. Downtown yeah. library. Okay. Good. With that, folks, it is the Hope time. Hope you like hot dogs. Oh, go ahead, Larry. I just said, hope she likes hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> no, they got, well, they got, they, got, well, they, they, the last two years they've had raised red hots out there. So you, uh -huh. buy, you can buy them for lunch. <clears throat> All right, folks. Absolutely. Looks like I'm going to be like, like a chicken with my head cut off that day. <laughs> the way it looks. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, with that, it is uh, the top of the hour at this time at six o'clock. So I want to thank everyone uh, for joining us for today's meeting for the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues. I want to thank the city of Ann Arbor. I want to thank the Community Television Network. I want to thank all of our commissioners and all of the community for helping to make the city of Ann Arbor inclusive and equitable for all. Uh, I really appreciate everyone's efforts. Uh, I definitely uh, uh, appreciate everyone's time, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night, everyone. Yep. I'm going to charge the headphones. Thank you. Bye. Bye. To adjourn. You're welcome. Good night.